Good morning. I have uh, turned this off when I turned it on. Okay. It's 10 o'clock. Started a little late. But I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, being 10 o'clock, I usually start a couple minutes early so people can join. But it is 10 a.m., so I'm going to go ahead and start, and um, we will move forward today. So I'm going to start in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you today. We ask you, Lord, to help this message resonate with people that hear it live and hear it later, and that it uh, helps them in their daily life with you. Help us, Lord, to show love to those around us, to be a light to those that you bring in our lives. We thank you for this day, for the Christmas season, for the new year coming up. We ask you to bless all those in our lives for 2021. Protect them and keep them safe. And help us to be a light for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So good morning for those that are here. So this is an interesting um, message today because it's really something I went through that God kind of uh, woke me up from. And then from there, it's really a good message for the new year. So we always talk about the new year and how we have to prepare, how we actually have to, uh, people go and make new year's resolutions, how do we get better? So this is a great opportunity to talk about how to get better. So what I'm gonna start with is James 118 to, to 127. So let me read that. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So the verse that comes to me, same verse, but I was taught it quick to listen, quick, 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 quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. So this is still pretty powerful. It says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. I'm reading out of New King James Version this morning. Um, For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and re- receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if everyone is hearing of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what, he, what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Why I started with this is, Quick to listen, so to speak, so to anger. That's kind of my thing. I, I am always trying to remember that every situation. Because really, in every situation, that really helps us. Because if we really are quick to listen, if we really are, so to speak, and so to anger. It's all three. Because we can be listening, but still, but then speaking over the person. Or we can be listening and getting angry. We need to be quick, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So, so here's the story. Um, and I wrote and wrote and wrote, so I'm going to refer to it a little bit because it's in my head, but I want to make sure that, that I hit it all. It was pretty, pretty powerful. Um, so for like the last two months, I've been having difficulty with my eyes and eyeglasses. I won't go into the reason, but I've had uh, eyeglass issues for a while and eye issues for a while. I've had some damage to my eyes. And so because of that, I have to go see special people to deal with my eyes and eyeglasses. So for two months, I've been trying to get new eyeglasses. And I'm wearing new eyeglasses today, um, but, but over two months. So I had to go twice, um, which doesn't seem to be a lot of times because I couldn't figure it out. And then I was told to, uh, and, and the second time, I, I, well, let me, I'm going to stop and, and not forget. So my second time there, which is only the second time, so I shouldn't have been complaining at that point. I show up. And the appointment's at 3.30 on a Friday afternoon. I wanted 
get out and do stuff with family. I got some work and stuff to do. It's supposed to be just a quick appointment for them to figure out what went wrong, basically. I get there and I notice that the lady who is, is running the place is being really kind to an elderly woman who's disabled in a wheelchair. And so then that lady keeps getting phone calls, basically, that's saying your ride is waiting, this is your ride, we need to come pick it up. It might have been you know, one of those um, vans that pick up people in wheelchairs and they have to take her somewhere and she's still waiting and there's a crowd of people. And, and so I just waited and I realized it was way more important for me to wait and for her to be taken care of. And this woman helping her was being really kind to her. She kept dropping things out of her purse and she'd pick it up. She made sure she had everything she needed. It was really impressive. Um, and so I, I just had patience and I waited. And so, which is what I try to do all the time, but from this story with her, I, I don't. <laughs> so anyways, the point being is, I finally get seen about five, the place is closing down. Um, it's in a medical center, so the medical center people are closing down. They're like, why is this person still here? All that kind of stuff. And, uh, and anyway, she gets to me, she goes through it, and she basically says, it's really hard to understand because it's strange, it's kind of peculiar. And so a lot of times in my life I've heard peculiar because there's actually a verse in Peter, 1 Peter 2.9, that states we are a chosen generation of peculiar people. So even my glasses and my eyesight is peculiar, right? So, um, so she thought she figured it out, but it was very peculiar. And she said, though, because it wasn't normal, she has to get it approved with her supervisor and that they would call me back and hopefully they can have it fixed for me. So the next week... Uh, I heard back from another woman, and this woman said that she was told by her supervisor that she had a CV in person, so this is time number three. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but it's also during the world of COVID, and I really did not want to go back um, into a medical health center during the time of COVID for the third time. Um, <laughs> so, but she said she had to see me, and her supervisor said it only her, and then she went on to tell me, but she would be out next week, and so it would have to be the Monday following that week. So at this point, it would have been 17 more days after I had the woman I just saw. And so I was like, this seems ridiculous, but okay, what am I going to do? I said, well, I don't really want to go in and, and have to deal with all kinds of people in the medical center. So can I go in early before you got this bear, your first appointment, so that... I have less exposure, and she agreed, so she set me up for 8.30 on a Monday, the first Monday before Christmas. So, um, I was frustrated by that, but but uh, I just, you know, what it's just life, things go on. And usually in life, I think I've talked about this before, when something's not going my way, usually I have to stop and listen and say, okay, God, what is it here you want me to do because... Something's not going our way, means there's probably something around here that you want me to pay attention to that somebody needs to be ministered to. It really happens to me all the time. Like somebody will be mistreating me in some place or treating me really badly, and, and I realize that either that person or somebody nearby needs to be ministered to, and that's my wake up call for God to say, hey, 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 pay attention, get your you know, mind out of, of whatever it's on, and focus on what's around you. Um, so, anyways, before I left, that morning, I kept, kept repeating this verse we just went through. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Pray with my wife that I would be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. That I would be open to whatever issues here were going on. Although, you know, by now it's been two and a half months and, and I was kind of frustrated. So I get there early because I was trying to get to things early. And there's nobody there. And uh, I get, so finally... 8.30 comes, and I, I look it up, thinking maybe I got it wrong. Maybe my appointment was at 9, and I was wrong. So I called the number, and they said they opened at 8.30. Well, then they're supposed to be there, so where are they? So I kept saying, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. I kept trying to be patient and to wait. But what happens? After 15 minutes, only 15 minutes to me, I started to get angry. I started to get frustrated. I started to complain. And I started going back through the record of wrongs. That's what I would call it, a record of wrongs. You know, going back to, okay, this is over two months now. It seems ridiculous, all these different experiences. And, and, and I just started creating a record of wrongs, which is not a good thing to do. So she finally shows up um, after 8.50 uh, with no apology, no explanation. 
and uh, had to do some other things before she even see me, so she didn't get to see me till nine. Um, and usually these are opportunities for me to minister, as I've said, but to me, I was frustrated from all the repeated mistakes, and I, and I jumped to conclusions. My conclusion was, she was out on vacation last week. She came in late today. She doesn't really care. None of these people really care. They, they, it's probably about money they keep bringing in because they want to spend extra money. I just started coming up with all these scenarios that who knew if they're true or not, but we do that when we're in a situation where we get frustrated. So we, 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 what's interesting is that so often in our lives, we make repeated mistakes and God forgives us for those. But sometimes we don't stop when people do it with us. We forget that God continually forgives us for our record of wrongs, for our repeated mistakes. We, we do, we, as soon as we feel like it's been too many things in a row, somebody's done something to us too many times, we start to hold that against them. We start to create this record of wrongs instead of forgiving them as God had forgiven us. And we need to not do that, but we do tend to do that. And this is a good example that we all do this. So anyways, uh, like I said, no explanation was given to me, and I asked, you know, was this to save money? And was told, no, it wasn't, but didn't give me any more information. So, like I said, I made rally with my head. And so, finally, we finished, um, and I started to leave at 9.30, but because I had made so much noise, because, like I said, it's in the health center, the organization had sent someone from higher up to speak to me. And... Um, she stopped me and she apologized and said she'd re-educate the people and make sure to help them to get better at customer service and taking care of people. But I had already started an email to higher ups because those that know me know I've been in government, used to be in government for years and years and in higher organizations and dealt with 700,000 staff and was used to the chains of command and if somebody did something wrong, I'd start to document it, send me out so I could resolve it. It's just something I do, which I shouldn't do as often as I do. So she said that, you don't need to send this email you started. I'll take care of it. So, but I had already started the record of wrongs for two months ago on this email. And I continued and continued and continued. So I am listing a record of wrongs of everything that's went wrong for two months until this day on this email. But Jesus died to remove our record of wrongs, what we've done to everybody else. Uh, he died for us, and he took our record of wrongs as far as east is from the west, and yet I'm creating a record of wrongs against people instead of forgiving them for them. I'm doing total opposite of what I'm supposed to be doing. I missed that. I missed your opportunities. I missed all kinds of things by doing what was wrong. And uh, it's just stupid, right? And I'm doing it, and then I heard, it wasn't audibly, but in my head I heard, first take the log out of your own eye. And that is Matthew... 633 to 75. So I'm going to read that. But before I do, first take the log out of your own eye and judge and you shall be judged. So take the log out of your own eye, David. And yet what did I do? I still sent the email. Why did I do that? I don't know. I did it though, didn't I? So Matthew 633. Let's read this. But seek first the kingdom of God. So this is Jesus speaking. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Was I seeking the kingdom of God? I wasn't really paying attention to the kingdom of God, was I? I was focused on me. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now, I was focused on, they haven't got it right now, and I can get it right. So, I wasn't focused on that either. Then comes right the big one before this, I that I was talking about, the log. Judge not that you will not be judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with that measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your own brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Now, I love the term log. It's in, I think it's in King James, but this is, it says plank. And the same, same thought pattern with Christ. Plank, log, giant, huge piece of wood in your eye instead of a speck in your brother's eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. 
So I put a post, uh, and the post for, for this message today, I saw a, put a post of a, 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 a huge logs on there, you probably saw. So a log is bigger than my head, basically. And so a log in your own eyes is, is of course, it's, it's kind of Jesus being, you know, a little sarcastic to them saying, you know, you, your problem's so big, you have a log in your eyes, bigger than your own head, and there's a little speck in your brother's eye, and you're focused on that instead of your log in your eye. And then what's interesting is this, do judge, you know, the whole part of judge not that you may be judged, here you are judging somebody about something small, when you have something much larger you have to deal with. My larger thing I didn't deal with is I wasn't being patient, I wasn't being an example of Jesus, I wasn't being quick to listen, so to speak, and so to anger. All the things I talked about being. And yet I continued on. So because I sent the email, I received a call that afternoon from the head of the organization I was dealing with because I had raised the record of wrongs to the higher-ups. Um, thankfully, I stopped before I actually went to the very top, which sometimes I do, um, and it, which is, like I said, not a good thing. Why was the girl late? Well, the other staff were all out to possible COVID exposure, and she finally heard, what? Had a toddler recovering from surgery. And she didn't want to leave that toddler because they were recovering from surgery while she'd been out the week before. She was 20 minutes late because she couldn't bring herself to leave her toddler, but she still had to work. She had to pay for a house over the toddler. She had to take care of this toddler, but she didn't want to leave. I didn't know this. Why did I know this? Because I lost my patience. I lost my temper. I wasn't quick to listen. I wasn't slow to speak. I wasn't slow to anger. I never asked. I focused on the record of wrongs. I didn't take the opportunity to listen. I was frustrated because I had to wait 17 more days and could only see her and she told me she would be out for a week. And I assumed vacation, but it wasn't. It was due to a child's illness. How would I know if I didn't listen, if I didn't ask? Instead, I just complained. When you listen and have patience and show, and you, and you, um, show love to people, then they tell you things. It happens to me all the time. If I get in a situation where somebody is mean to me or somebody says something uh, short to me or whatever it might be, or just somebody's grumpy, and I stop and I listen, I show patience, and I show love, they open up. They tell me what's going on. But I didn't provide that opportunity for this woman to open up. Instead, I was just focused on my situation. The man spoke and spoke and spoke, and, and I didn't think somebody could speak so much. I, I spoke a few times when he was speaking, trying to stop him from speaking. The call went on for about 45 minutes, which seemed ridiculous. But as it was going on, I kept hearing God say to listen. And because I've really blown it, he already said the girl was late because of her, you know, toddler recovery from surgery. I listened this time. I was quick to listen. I was slow to speak. I was slow to anger. I finally followed what I'm supposed to be following. And so after 20 minutes of him talking about seemed like gibberish, and I really didn't want to listen to it, he finally said it. What did he say? He said, Jesus. What? <laughs> All I had to do was listen. All I had to do was be quick to listen, so to speak, so to anger, and this guy says, Jesus. And then he said he felt goosebumps talking to me. Well, how could he? I wasn't acting like Jesus. How was he seeing Jesus in me? I was acting like a spoiled, privileged man I am when my eyes are not on Jesus. But he said he felt goosebumps. What a difference from me behaving like I did before to now just listening and letting Christ use me by listening so that this man on the phone who had called me to try to resolve the situation, he was felt goosebumps. From what? From me just listening and letting Jesus take over. That actually got my attention. Jesus. Whenever anybody says Jesus, it gets my attention. Um... I missed out after being minister to that young woman at a time of crisis in her life. The lowest time when you have a sick child. I wasn't quick to listen, so to speak, so to anger. I know better than this. I tell everyone this. And, and it goes back in that scripture. You know, do, you know we talked about it. The, the, the scripture we read earlier about after a quick listen, about you're looking at a mirror and you don't remember. You, you live the way you speak. But I didn't do that. I always tell everyone to be patient with others. I always tell everyone we don't know what they're going through. 
And yet I was the opposite. But I say this all the time, but I didn't live it. So often we say things, but we don't do it. And we need to. But it's an example of show you people that beat themselves up for making mistakes. We all make mistakes. The pro problem is, do we learn from it? Do we get better from it? I was frustrated with something insignificant in comparison with a sick toddler with medical issues. And um, the mom who had to leave him to work because no one else could. How dare I? Really? Lord, forgive me for this. Help me to be more like Jesus. My wife wouldn't have done this. She's very patient. She's so patient. My boss wouldn't have done this. She's so kind and patient. They would never have responded to this lady like this. Jesus would not have done this. How many times do I have to repeat this before I learn to be like Jesus? You know, how often do we speak out, speak against, when we truly need to do, all we truly need to do is listen and pray. We, we do that so often. We, we have something happen in our lives, and we speak out against it. We, 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 we get angry about it. We get frustrated about it. We don't stop. We don't listen. We don't pray. What our role is is to be, be a light for Jesus, to draw people to Jesus, to be there to minister to them. You know, Jesus took our record of wrong, took it as far as the east and the west, that we could be forgiven for what we did wrong. We need to do that to others. And so what's amazing is my mess up, my behaving badly, turned into a great opportunity to talk about what we need to do each and every day, what we need to do to get it right instead of wrong. So often we repeat our mistakes, and God gives us an opportunity to learn from them. He sure gave me an opportunity this time. He took me right to the verses talking about what I need to do. The log in my eye. So often I've heard that log in my eye, but I've never really thought about it. Like, I don't have a log in my eye, but I did. And so often I may without realizing it. We want to be there for people in a way that draws them to the Lord. That woman, we, we just pray that her child will be okay. Um, we pray that her life will, will lead her to get to know you in a greater way too. But I miss that opportunity. So many times in our lives we miss opportunities because we don't pay attention we don't listen, we don't slow down, and we don't just sit back and let Jesus use us as a vessel to hear others. And so what happens when we do? Somebody said Jesus and blew my mind. Um, I pray that each one of us in this new year can take the time to listen, to be slow to speak, to slow to anger, to show love to others, and then make sure that before we remove something small from our, you know, a little speck, like when we get something in our eye and we need to come in there and help us, get this little speck out, which is not very difficult, that we make sure we don't have something in our eye preventing us from doing that, so we can't even see the issue. But we're so focused on our, self, our own issues that we can't truly see the other issue apart from us. Does this mean that the people I dealt with didn't make mistakes? Sure, they made all kinds of mistakes. But I should be the one that responds in a way like nobody else does. That they see me respond in a way that's like, wow, look at how we responded in this horrible situation. It wasn't horrible, but you know, frustrating situation. I didn't do that this time. And so that I missed out an opportunity to make an impact for people that I should be doing every day. And each one of us miss out on these opportunities, but what we need to do is we need to ask God to give us another opportunity, help us to get better, to become more like Jesus each and every day. And so, as we go into this new year, I pray that each and every one of you are able to do that, to be a light to those around them, to be able to be patient with those people, whether it's in a checkout line or driving your car or wherever you may be. But if somebody starts to treat you in a way that's frustrating or mistake-filled or whatever, to just stop for a second and say, is there something here that I can minister to? Is there someone here who's hurting and I don't know why or how that I can help with? that God can use me in this moment. Let me, let me here finish with prayer. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you have a wonderful week and a wonderful new year. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. We pray for this woman that I've talked about and her child, that the child will be fully healed. We pray for all those struggling right now with choices that we make with health and, and, and be able to put a roof over the heads of, the, of their families and all the people that are hurting in this country. We ask you to help us be a light to those people, to remember there are so many people hurting in so many different ways, and use every opportunity we can to show them love in this difficult time. 
Let us be a light in 2021 to all those we encounter and let that light draw them to Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed uh, New Year's and uh, look forward to hearing from Pastor David Max next weekend about his New Year's message for all of us.